can you chime in on the good versus evil concept that people are concerned about with AI taking jobs and making creativity all feel so similar? Like how ought we think about that? Because your book is A, brilliant and B, very, very optimistic, which is one of the things I love about it. And I'm hoping you can pass some of that optimism onto the skeptics who are listening right now. Yeah. I mean, the reality is it's going to be all of the above. <laughs> it's going to be the good, the bad and, and the ugly. Uh, and you know, I'll, 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 uh, I'll traffic in the ugly for a little bit and then we'll, we'll, we'll get to the optimistic side. You know, the, even outside of education, the things that I'm most worried about are uh, fraud is going to get just way more sophisticated. You're going to get calls from your, your children saying, Hey mom, dad, I'm, I'm stuck. I just got arrested. It's going to be in their voice. You're going to be able to ask them questions. Yeah. Wire me $500. Um, to but it's get going out to be in a, yeah. This already happened here. There was yeah. a case out here in Northern California. It just happened. It was, it was a completely spoofed voice and, you know, people are going to have to come up with their own um, uh, secret passwords. So, you know, you say, okay, what's the secret password so that I know that you're not an AI, which I recommend everyone do. do. I've, I've done that with, with my family already. Wow. Um, wow. Okay. You, you're going to see state actors or, or just troublemakers, you know, try to, you could create a run on banks with uh, video, fake video of people lined up around the bank, uh, you know, and not getting their money back and, and things like that. You can uh, obviously, you can create fake videos of politicians or celebrities doing things that, you know, by the time the clarification comes out that it's fake, half the world will think that it's real. So those are real, real, real risks. Um, and then on top of that, as you mentioned, you know, there are going to be job dislocations. Uh, there is the opportunity for uh, this turning into a crutch and for, for people leaning on it. What, what I'm always telling myself, and, you know, I go to a lot of dinner parties now and AI tends to be a topic and people tend to wallow in the negative, like, oh, yeah. woe is me. How is this going to happen? And then they philosophize, is this going to be good, Ned? Is this going to be bad? And I tell everyone, look, it's going to be as good or bad as we make it. The bad stuff we know there's bad people with bad intent and they're not going to slow down. They're going to, you know, we can regulate whatever we want. They don't, they're not going to care. We can't regulate Russia. Um, they, we can't regulate uh, criminal uh, rings. Um, they're going to do what they're going to do. And, and we, we need to make sure that good actors are, are, are doing the right things to mitigate that and that we're all educated so that we don't fall prey to that. But on the good side, we shouldn't just sit and wait. We should say, okay, there are risks uh, in education. There are risks of a student using it to cheat. There are risks of um, bias in, in an AI, but there's ways to not only mitigate those things, uh, but also ways to then use it to enhance learning. And obviously that's the way, but, you know, I, I talk a lot about, hey, let's use AI to enhance HI, human intelligence, human purpose, human meaning. And, um, you know, I, I, I give a ton of examples on the cheating issue, which is probably the one that's most obvious to the most to most people. In particular, cheating on writing is where people are most worried, but it can apl apply to, frankly, any any creative act. We what we're launching on Conmigo for this coming school year is a teacher can come up with an assignment, a writing assignment with the AI, including a, a rubric, assign it through the AI, and then the AI tells the students. Hey, this, your teacher wants you to work on this. Let's work on this together. The AI won't write the paper. They'll say, okay, let's come up with a thesis statement. This, you know, they can go back and forth. And, and this is an important point. A lot of folks, they think, okay, if there's a robot can, that can be creative, maybe that squeezes out the creativity for other people. But that's the exact opposite of what we all experience in real life. The most creative times in our lives are when we're around other creative people, when we're allowed to riff with other people. And I, I wish I had more opportunities to riff ideas and not feel judgment uh, and, and think crazy thoughts and for something else or someone else to say, hey, that's a cool idea, Sal, but what about this? And what about that? Or, you know, I don't know if that'll work because you haven't thought about that edge case. And so students can come up with a thesis statement. They can do outlining with the AI. Then they can write their paper. The AI is highlighting parts of the passage, really like you're collaborating on a, on a Google Doc and says, well, you know, I think you could make the hook a little bit better, or you can back up this argument. Uh, this, this data point really doesn't seem too valid, or can you give the citation here? So like a really good writing coach. And then once the student's ready to submit and the AI can give them, give them a preliminary sense, like, hey, based on my view of the rubric, I think you're already at an A minus level here. Do you want to submit it? Student submits it. Obviously the teacher maybe can get that preliminary grade. Teacher would be the final, final arbiter. But what the teacher is getting isn't just a final output and a potential grade around it. The teacher is getting the whole process. Uh, the AI could say, look, 
I'm pretty confident this is Chase's work. We worked on this together for about four and a half hours. Chase did 95% of the work. Here's the whole transcript of our conversation. If I were to summarize it, you know, he had a little bit of trouble coming up with a thesis statement, eventually got there. He was actually pretty good at doing the research. He found some really good resources. I thought it was a pretty strong paper. Uh, it's pretty consistent with the other writing that he's done in class. Um, I'm conf confident it's his work. If Chase goes to chat GPT or gets his older sister to write the paper, our AI is going to say, I don't know where this paper came from. We didn't work on this together. And by the way, it's not consistent with his other writing. So not only does it undermine AI cheating, it undermines all forms of cheating. In the book, on the ch I have a chapter on cheating. And I always <laughs> like to start so from first principles. Like, okay, before we even talk about AI, what, what's the state of cheating before AI? And honestly, AI just put a spotlight on something that has been pretty rampant. And it seems like it's been getting worse uh, for, the last, for the last few decades, probably because of the internet. Um, and so not only does it undermine all of those forms of cheating reasonably well, but it's now supporting the student better. It's supporting the teacher better. And it's giving the teacher with less time more insights because the AI could say, look, I just did all 150 papers. And it turns out about 30 of your students are really struggling with thesis statements. In each of your classes, you should do a little mini session on thesis statements for about 20 minutes. And by the way, I've created a draft lesson plan for you. That is going to change writing. And obviously the students are far more supported in their writing than, than, than they've ever been. But that's only, you know, that's one example of if we take a an active viewpoint, we can turn these fears or these risks into opportunities that not just mitigate the fear or risk, but actually get us to a place that's way better than we were before.